we do hope to be able to disclose some of the really interesting secrets that the universe still has to teach us. A lot of the things that we're looking for are just very rare and very unlikely to be seen. It is a treasure hunt. We're looking for the treasure. We don't know exactly where it is, but we're going to keep looking because it's valuable. I think we're closing in. It's in there somewhere. In trying to understand dark matter, we literally explain the formation history of our own universe. We're on the surface in Leeds, South Dakota at the Sanford Underground Research Facility. This site was actually the deepest gold mine in the U.S. and we operate a deep underground laboratory that supports a LUX experiment that's operating right now as we speak, collecting data. LUX is an extremely sensitive instrument. It's a device that's designed to look for dark matter interactions with ordinary matter and it's located a mile underground to get away from cosmic rays. These are some of the most sensitive detectors that have ever been built. You might have one or two events per year. That mile of rock provides additional shielding to help shield these experiments from the cosmic radiation primarily coming from the sun. And so that lowers that noise by about a factor of 10 million. The first time I came here, it was very much a wow moment for me. I never thought I would end up in a mine shaft a mile under the earth. We're at 4850 feet below the surface, so almost a mile. We make that journey because on the surface, more than one cosmic ray is going through my hand every second. Here on the 4850 level, less than one uh, cosmic ray is going through my hand every three months. So Lux has been designed to be the quietest place in the world, and through such an instrument we hope to be able to study dark matter. But the reality is we're in competition with other scientific groups who are every bit as capable as we are. As long as we attempt to carry out the best dark matter experiment, of course that puts us in a very strong position to be the first set of scientists you know, look at it and say, yes, that's it. We know that dark matter is out there. We know that it's here with us right now. You know, it's like the wind. You don't see the wind directly because air is basically transparent and the dark matter is basically transparent, but you can see its effects. Billions of dark matter particles are traveling through you every second. We can't see them, that's why we call it dark, dark matter, but nonetheless, they're over 90% of the matter in our galaxy. We don't know its basic nature. We don't know much of anything other than its gravitational effects, which we can see with telescopes. You can look at how stars are moving around the galaxy, and you plot out what the velocities of those stars should be. What you see is the velocities go up and they stay constant. That can only happen if there's a lot more gravitational stuff holding it all together, allowing you to have these high velocities. If you didn't have that dark matter holding things together, the stars would go flying out to a larger radius.
But you can also look at how light is bent around galaxy clusters. See how objects in the background are deformed by the gravity in between, and you can use that to map out a lot of some extra stuff that's invisible, that we can't see, but is gravitationally profound. From what we understand about the Big Bang, the dark matter would be produced in just about the right amount that we would need to map these astrophysical observations. Dark matter particles don't like to interact. They go through the Earth pretty much like it's transparent. They go through you and I like we're transparent. A WIMP is a weakly interacting massive particle. We have very good reason to believe that dark matter is WIMPs or a large fraction of the dark matter is WIMPs. The weakly interacting massive particle, the simple humble WIMP still right now remains probably our best guess, given what we know to date about particle physics. It's a little embarrassing that here we are, 21st century, and we still don't know what most of the universe is made of. You know, there's a pretty small slice of reality that we can actually see or touch. In physics, you can go well beyond these things. We can't feel or touch radio waves or infrared or ultraviolet or X-rays or gamma rays neutrons, but those things are all around us all the time, and with the right instruments you can detect them. So this is Lux right here. This is the, uh, the water tank. Lux is deep inside of this guy right here. The water acts as our neutron and gamma ray shield from all the radiation in the lab space. Lux detector in its sort of most basic form is, is simply a bucket of xenon. Liquid xenon or xenon the noble element is very pure. It has very few radioactive isotopes in it, which means in its natural form it's incredibly quiet. We're able then to use the feature of xenon, which is that when particles interact in it, it will generate a small amount of light. In order to detect dark matter events, we need to study or watch the xenon incredibly closely. We've designed a system of photomultiplier tubes that are watching the xenon from below and above. In our experiment, we have 122 photomultiplier tubes. They're single photon sensitive devices. The average 60 watt light bulb produces one billion billion photons per second, and we see one photon. We expect a dark matter particle is gonna fly into our detector. It will, almost billiard ball style, interact directly with a xenon nucleus. Associated with that, there is the emission of light, and we can pick up the individual photons that are being emitted from the xenon. When that happens, you have our S1 signal. The electrons themselves sometimes actually get removed from the atom. When that happens, you now have free electrons. Individual electrons coming out of the xenon liquid generate these incredible bursts of light and light up like Christmas trees. So we get a second scintillation signal, we call it S2. So we see like little blips that last about 30 nanoseconds. When we see light hit in a certain pattern, then we can use that information to then reconstruct where it happened. Having such a detailed understanding of the detector is absolutely vital to be confident that what you have is a dark matter signal and not simply some other form of radioactivity. To be able to finally directly detect the particle or the particles that make up this matter that we know very little about except that exists would be extraordinary. Wow, dark matter particles. That would be fantastic, right? To feel that you were one of the people that got this first view of the dominant matter in the universe would be an extremely strong, uh, euphoric experience. 
But every time you see something that you think might be a signal, you're probably wrong. I joined the dark matter field really right at its inception as far as direct detection was concerned. That was about 27 years ago. People were telling me it would take us five years, uh, the time I joined, and within those five years we were likely to already be detecting signal and the rest, as they say, was going to be jam. You know, nature doesn't have to play by our rules. It doesn't want to necessarily deliver a scientific challenge that is literally solved in a year, or even five. Some challenges may take an entire scientific lifetime to solve. The thing about science is that it's true whether or not you believe it, and we have to ferret out that truth. You're not really having fun unless you're out to discover something new. That's, at least that's true for me. And the fun is in the chase. I think it would be fun if we discovered it too, but uh, there's a lot of fun in the chase. Lux runs day and night. And the project is absolutely worth the effort. Our first Lux run underground was for about 90 days. When we looked in that data, we found complete absence of any dark matter signal. But that was still extremely exciting. There are many theories for what the dark matter could be, and we eliminated a number of those possibilities. And so we've made great progress. We're looking for very, very occasional events, like a single you know, snowflake in a blizzard. Neutrons, gamma rays, and beta decays create backgrounds. The more there are background events, the harder it is to see those individual dark matter particles. We're looking for events per year. And to put that in perspective, if I just take a typical radiation detector, you're gonna get thousands of events per second. Just turning it on, just from gamma rays and neutrons all around us all the time. And so we knock that down by trillions, factors of trillions. Lux is really trying to pass boundaries. We're really trying to be the quietest place, to be the experiment that is most sensitive to dark matter. It's like the most radio quiet place on Earth right now. The beauty of Lux, if you like, is not only have we created the quietest place on Earth, but we're able to actually watch it, which is obviously the critical aspect that we need for a dark matter experiment. Our next run is for 300 days, 300 live days. That should bring us around the end of 2016. We're prepared to be patient. We wait not just days, but weeks and months for single interactions. That puts us in a very strong position to get direct evidence for this dark matter. But it, clearly you don't know what the future holds. After searching for 27 years, there have been highs and lows. If the model that nature happens to have chosen is not one of the ones we're able to test with Lux, then we're going to have to get smarter and figure out other ways to look for it. Obviously, we would all love it if we you know, see dark matter interactions. But even if we don't, we're on the trail of one of the most important scientific questions of our age. Dark matter researchers have to have a certain amount of faith in what they're doing. It's a huge mystery. It's one of the most important questions in physics today. 
and it's a solvable mystery. Anything in physics, I think, is, is solvable, so. Now that I've started this experiment, I think I would really love to find dark matter. I'm pretty invested in it, so we'll see. Dark matter is so fundamental to forming uh, uh, the structure in our universe. All those things that we find interesting, the, you know, the stars, the galaxies. If you want to understand anything about our universe, it means you have to try to understand what the nature of dark matter is.